Well, I'll show you guys what I'm doing here today. Are you ready to see it? Took away the whole stairwell. <laughs> so I'm finally at that point where putting in a new stairwell. This old rickety thing. It's probably been here as long as the house has. This part here, it's pretty solid. I'll probably end up putting that at the end of my driveway, see if anyone wants to take that for me. And this part here, it's a lot of barn board. Um, yep, people love barn board. You can always sell that stuff if you want. Take, might take that all apart and sell it. The rest of it, probably just keep it, all these pieces here, and I'll keep them in my wood pile for scrap. And then I went out and bought some new lumber. So it's been going okay. So this is my first time making these stair stringers and it's, I had a hard time, you know, wrapping my head around it, trying to figure it out at first. But it's, now that I've done it, it's pretty good. I, I'm pretty confident with what, what I got here. Uh, but I did, what happened was that I bought 16 footers, 16 feet long, uh, two by 12. And what was ha what happened, so I cut one using a seven inch riser and by the time it got to here, there was about five and a half feet between the stairwell and the step here. So it was way too small. So I had to get rid of that piece and I increased the risers from seven to nine inches. So it's less steps, it's a steeper, harder grade to, to walk up of, to walk up. But uh, yeah, I don't really have much of a choice because the stairwell is pretty small. So what I ended up doing was uh, I used a six, one of these is a 16 foot and then two of them are 12 foot, 12 footers. So I took one 16 foot back to the store and got a refund. I think it was like $36 for, for a 16 foot, 16 footer. And then I bought two 12s and they were like $28 each. So, I mean, I saved a few bucks that way. And, uh, but I had to go back for another piece anyways. So yeah, I mean, so I had to, I'm going to have to, I have a 16 footer that's already cut, it's outside, and so that's going to be, you know, garbage. So it's a, way, a little bit of a waste, but, you know, the first time I'm cutting stringers, and the way that I look at it is, uh, you know, if I were to hire a carpenter to do this for me, he would, it would have been a lot more, it would have been, you know, three, maybe $400, I'm not sure, for him to put it all together and install it, so I'm saving money on that way. So... The cost of one uh, piece of wood, it's not a big deal. I don't mind. Now what I'm doing for the uh, for the hangers is I have a whole bunch of this stuff. And so what I did is I cut them into strips using an angle grinder. And it's gonna be overlapping just like that. So there should be enough for the, you know, to, to put enough uh, screw uh, nails in the, in the wood. That one was bent. This is going to be my kicker. So that's going to go on the bottom of the stairs here. So that will go, I'll put that in after I, I hang up these stringers. And then uh, what do I have here? I have a little hammer with, uh, with some cartridges there. So I'm gonna nail that right into the floor. And I had to, it was sitting out in my shed, it got all rusty. So I oiled it up quite a bit. It's gonna go fine. Oh, my cats are down here with me, and they're pretty upset and scared. They don't know what to do. So, got to tack on this piece here, just like that. Going All done. done. Pretty proud. Looks nice, nice and sturdy. I used so I bought a sheet of plywood, three-quarter inch plywood, and man, oh man, that stuff is expensive. $50 each. So I bought two of them. I was only, I only used up one, one full sheet. See on this step here, I actually cut a sliver off because I didn't have one that was long enough. So I was able to just use one full sheet. That was 50 bucks. I'm going to take the other one back. 
I was thinking I, I need two of them because, you know, for the, uh, for that part, I was going, I'm going to get some more wood and cover that up. But I'm just going to use like a thinner stuff, thinner stock, like three quarter eighth or quarter inch plywood. You don't need a three quarter inch to, to fill that part in. So that's it. The cats don't know how to handle it yet. They haven't gone up, but they'll figure it out. I glued up everything. So all this glue is going to dry clear. It's dripping all over the floor. So it's still pretty wet going to be nice a lot nicer than what I had before this stuff here I bring that stuff outside that's my my other job right now is to clean everything up but it really opens up the whole basement a lot picked up a whole bunch of scrap some more stuff and this is from uh, my shop they gave me three furnaces and hot water tank a friend of mine called me for a gazebo that blew down in the last windstorm so a whole bunch of poles and stuff and just some other loose tin and there's a big grease thing here this thing is full of grease it's from my drop-off bin the restaurant at that mall that i have my drop-off bin at they dropped off this uh, uh i guess it's like a stove it has some big cast iron burners inside of it it's pretty heavy kind of a pile that's adding up so I got two freezers here. This one's actually pretty nice. I'm thinking of selling that like that as it is. This one still works too. The guy said um, that it's kind of not so good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this one's all right. I think it actually still has some, oh yeah, it has some one thing of food down in there, but it's still wrapped in plastic. So it doesn't stink at least. Anyway, so I, this is, these two are from uh, a reply to my Kijiji ad. And also picked up this old lawn tractor. Eh, I don't know. It's all steel. It's just a little bit of wood up here. So I'm probably just going to flip that for a few bucks. Just uh, It's just something that someone can pull behind their lawn tractor. I have some furnaces and some hot water tanks. I'm working on this little trailer here. And what I have to do with this guy is I ordered some new ball joints or not uh, ball joints or bearing things. What should I call it? Wheel bearings, wheel bearing hub. That's it. So I have ordered these off eBay. I found them for $40 each. And this is from, well, I didn't know what this was from. So this thing, this trailer I got for free um someone just gave it to me and this i guess what happened is that they cut off the back axle off of a car and then put a trailer on put on this trailer here so it's custom made deal i had no idea what these were from but i have the hub caps so what i did is i used google search and i looked in the images and i found these and uh I I just matched them up visually, you know? And so th these are from 1980s Chevy Citation. So what I did is I just uh, looked up hubs, hub bearings for Chevy Citation. I couldn't find any. Well, I could find some, but they were pretty expensive. But uh, what I ended up ordering was hub bearings for a Chevrolet Cavalier. And it looks pretty much identical. I hope it's the same, going to be the same. It has the same, you know, it looks like that, um, the ones I have ordered. And I just hope that the the bolts are the same because I have the tires, which are under there, that fit onto those hubs, the rims. So I'm just going to hope that it fits. If it doesn't fit, I don't know what I'll do. Um, may buy the, the, the more expensive ones. But the other thing that I have, that I ha the other problem that I had was that the bolts, yeah, I couldn't get those off at all. So I'm probably going to have to, I'm going to buy a tap and die set and then redo those, drill them out. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it to put all this effort in. It's a nice little trailer. I, I want to get back into working shape. So that's that project there. There's like the, the rotors and stuff from them. Oh, the scrap there. These things are just completely done. 
See, there, there actually used to be a, there's like a little dome, a little cap that goes on top of here. But that totally rusted out. And the reason why is that this thing is upside down. This whole axle is upside down. So it's supposed to be pointed up that way. See, what happens is that water just collects down inside there. And it just has nowhere to go. So that's what's happened. This whole bunch of water just, just uh, rusted out this whole thing. There's a little bit of rust damage right there, but um, there's actually supposed to be a hole right there, so it's just gotten a little bit bigger. But it looks pretty bad, but I don't think it's bad. Um, so what I'll do is, um, before I put the new ones on, I'm going to drill a hole right through there. And it's just to drain out any water that may collect inside there. I want to show you guys what I did yesterday. A bunch of scraps sitting there. This stuff is from my drop-off bin, just some e-waste. Printers, TVs, microwaves, the usual deal. Nothing exciting. But yeah, so yesterday was so beautiful out, just like today. So I took apart my this whole truck. Got a whole bunch of parts, all this stuff here. Pretty excited about it. I did pretty well. There's the hood. There's the gas tank. The gas tank actually fell off. Uh, over the winter time because the the straps just rotted out so I was able to just take the whole tank out and had a, a can of gas I'll show you that in a second I emptied out the, all the gas by doing it like this I just balanced it on the back of my tailgate and I drilled a hole right there and I just kind of filled it up with a gas can like that yeah, I had to pull the whole thing out underneath there. Luckily, I didn't have to jack it up to get the gas tank out. Show you the inside. Really went to town on it. Whole steering column is gone. Everything's gone. The only thing left, are, I didn't do the seats or the seat belts. I didn't take any of that stuff. Um, can't really think of anything else that's inside here that I wanted to take. There's actually a couple of switches for the... Um, I didn't take apart any of the doors. They're just met. There's no electronics or anything. I didn't take the headlights off either. The headlights, I don't know. They just annoyed me <laughs> as soon as I started taking them off. Yeah, I couldn't figure it out, so I just... Ah, forget it. Not losing much money there anyways. So I'll show you... Uh, go over this real quick, guys. What I, what I did get. This radiator it was a replacement part uh, obviously it's not the original to the truck um, but what happened I don't know what happened here actually it's got bent somehow I don't I don't think I did that when I was taking it apart but as you can see it's totally warped right there I think they may have done that when they were putting it in because I really don't think I I did that when I was taking it out Anyways, so I'm probably, nah, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, if anything, I'll try and sell it locally, like on Kijiji. It has like the transmission cooling line there and everything. But worst case, it's just a piece of scrap. Whole bunch of other good parts here. There's a windshield washer, fluid reservoir, and coolant. These are the hinges for the hood. So there's a pair of hinges. Um, these are spring-loaded hinges, so you don't need one of the bars hold, to hold up the hood. There's one wiper. Oh yeah, I still have to get the other one. The other one's still in the truck. Just little stuff too. You know, the air ring, uh, filter box. Some of these bolts I've put in packages. Try and sell the bolts. You know, like there's all the bolts to hold the hinges on. All these hubcaps um, for the brakes. That's to hold the hood down. Battery holder, and this whole assembly is. Um, I may, you know, take that apart further. But there's the as like a brake control module, I guess. Some other brakes stuff on there, and this is a computer. Those sell pretty well on eBay. I saw them selling for around 80 bucks. A Pitman arm nut. Actually, I'm still thinking of taking the Pitman arm off too. So, still a couple parts I may take off further. That's a brake booster. 
and I remember the guy that I bought this truck off of saying that that was replaced, so that's a new part. Uh, there's an airbag thing, airbag switch. That's a airbag, airbag uh, control. There's another control. I have no idea what that does. This is the steering arm, um, and a whole bunch of these pieces of a dashboard has like a brake trailer brake module on it dashboard part there's some there's the books and this thing here is the passenger airbag i don't think i'm allowed to ship that through canada post so i don't know what to do with that guy there's the odometer and this was a good part to get off of i think so that's the whole power steering with the bracket and the high pressure line so that's i think that's going to be a good part to sell that's just the that is just the fan blower there's just a whole bunch of parts that came that the guy gave to me with the truck a whole bunch of gaskets and stuff this this truck has been a really really good purchase one of the best purchases that i think i've ever made there's the whole steering column yeah, so there it is. You got the whole shifter, the ignition there, uh, turn signal, all that good stuff. And there are the airbags on there. Wasn't that bad to take off. Once I, once I got the brake booster thing off, everything else just fell off, really. Um, that's the emergency parking. Uh, emergency parking thing. <laughs> that is the fuel pump. So that's good, good piece. I've seen them sell on eBay pretty well. This is the can of gas that I got. It's full right up to there. Uh, I've had this truck sitting here. I'm guessing at least two years, so I don't know. I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, it smelled fine. It didn't smell bad. So I really don't know. Uh, sorry, my rooster. Um, that's just the cup holder. That's the glove box, control for the heating, cooling. That. This is a gearbox, steering gearbox, and this is a expensive old dude. It's heavy. I know it's expensive because I actually replaced this on my last truck because the one I had was leaking pure power steering fluid. I was looking on eBay, and they had um, refurbished ones up on eBay for like three or four hundred dollars. So. Um, wasn't that hard to take off. I ha I bought a Pitman arm puller, which you, you would need to take these to take the Pitman arm off. I bought one for the last job that I did. So I had it to take this one off. So it was really easy actually. Once you have hardest part I find is having all the right tools and having them all the right tools handy at your at your grasp. So I had all my tools out here and um, no, I wanted to just say about cars in general was uh, I'm not I may sound like I know what I'm talking about a lot. It's all just uh, I'm all self-taught um, When I I think I bought my first car when I was about 23 or so and It was uh, an 89 Toyota Camry before that I had hardly any knowledge at all about cars and it, it really was just, uh, I didn't know anything about it, thinking that uh, only mechanics could ever work on a car. No way I could ever do it. And when I bought that, my first car, I went to go change the oil on that thing. And, you know, thinking, oh, I'll save a few bucks. And I ended up actually draining out all the transmission fluid by accident. <laughs> and I was stuck in my driveway. I had to call a friend to come bring me trans new transmission fluid. You know, <laughs> it was just a nightmare. So. That was my first experience ever trying to fix cars. Now, um, you know, it's all just nuts and bolts. Don't be scared of this stuff. It's anyone can fix these things. You know, human beings put this stuff together. So there's no reason why you can't uh, fix something like this. So that's what I always think about anything that I'm, that I'm doing is that, you know, people built this stuff. So, you know, it, there's no reason why you can't figure it out yourself so that's my take on that got the hubs in today 
for the trailer and it's a perfect fit let's see here just like that perfect and the other thing is is that they fit my rims too perfect perfectly yep so it's great that is good it's all good now all i have to do is try and drill out these holes so i went to lowe's today and bought some stuff here just a tap and some bolts i got nine of them i need eight and a tap and die or just the tap rather this isn't working out too well guys all right so I've, I've broken one bit in there and one bit in there. Oh my gosh. And it's taken me forever to get through these things. So I really don't know. I would love to just, you know, get a welder and just weld the thing right on and then be done with it. You know, these will last a while. And once it does, uh, once these do give out, I'll just replace the whole axle. Just hooked up the old trailer. <clears throat> I've had this thing for years and years now. It's still going. <clears throat> the only problem it has is that, again, this is like a differential from an old automobile. <clears throat> that differential leaks like a, like a strainer. Just can't stop it. I've tried to patch it up so many times. But today I'm going to pick up a, tract, a lawn tractor. So I, I have these two boards here. I just cut them so that they're even. And uh, hopefully everything will go okay. Back home, safe and sound, guys. Got a lot of good stuff. Gave me a couple pieces of plywood here. Some short pieces. I'll use that for my staircase to finish that job off. Wow. A lot of stuff here. Chop saw. Uh, what is model is that? I don't know. It's a serious craftsman. Cast iron. Um, some printers underneath here. There's these saw horses. You know, you can put a piece of 2 by 4 on that and make a saw horse. Gave me a bucket of driveway sealant that is brand new, never opened. Uh, uh, maybe I can return that to Home Depot or something, get some money. Uh, nice little workbench. This is a workbench right here, too. It just needs a new table. And uh, what else we got back there? It's actually a bandsaw right there. It's a little mini one, and it works. You said the bandsaw and the chop saw work. Over here, that's the lawn tractor. It was really easy to get up onto the trailer with these boards. I'm glad I brought those. Uh, tractor, tra the lawn tractor, it's not working so great. Uh, he said the motor's fine, but probably he needs new fuel lines and a whole bunch of other, other stuff. Uh, this big, massive printer. This thing is big. Ay, ay, ay. A whole bunch of these fire extinguishers and they've all been discharged, he said. Uh, so those are, you have to empty out all that powder stuff inside. Battery, battery booster thing, uh, another sawhorse. I got two more workbenches right there. Um, oh yeah, a block and tackle. Not sure if that works. So it was a pretty good haul today, very good. It's just good to get the trailer up and running again after the winter. And now I have to sort out all this stuff. In a couple hours I have a welder coming over. He's going to put these hubs on for me. He's just going to charge me 75 bucks to put to weld the hubs on. And that'll be that. I can get this thing moving too. Alright, the guy came by and welded welded these hubs on for me see that's pretty good job I think so he knew what he was doing and got done pretty fast under an hour so it was 75 bucks total now I get to put it on the tires and 
have a nice little trailer for myself. Hey you guys, we're out here to do a little bit of work. Yep. You guys are going to do the work for me today? Yep. All right, let's see what we got. So I got the truck and a trailer today. All this refrigerator boxes. So this is a washing machine. Wow. Yeah. Shut up. The most expensive thing. Shut up. All right, you guys. Well, um, I'm just gonna go wait in the truck, okay. and you guys let me know when it's all done. Okay. 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 What is taking those kids so long? Man, oh man. Yeah, I better go check on them. They should be done by now. <sighs> man, those lazy kids. What took you guys so long? Oh, don't tell me you're you're hurting from doing all this by yourself. Uh, looks like if he found a couple of gems. Not bad. Old toaster. And a car radio. Sweet. So I still have some of the stuff that picked up today in there. But I made a little bit of room. I did find a dishwasher on the way over here. Made a little bit of room in the truck because got the drop off bin, we got the fridge. It's pretty gross in there. Alright, then we got some other stuff here. What do we got? Tomato cages. Air conditioner. This little tea kettle. A desk. Microwave. A whole bunch of cord. Oh, that's interesting. Look at those tubes. Another tube there. Wow. Oh, it don't break anything. Oh, I heard something break. Did it break something? No, maybe not. Anyways, yeah, look at all that stuff there. Wow. A lot of tubes on that thing. Cool. Alright. Well, don't know what that is, but load it up. Some sort of timer. And a bag full of wire. One of my, one of my video clips, I said that you're not supposed to ship out airbags. So I just wanted to double check that. My postmaster gave me a little pamphlet, dangerous goods. It's always good to get brushed up on this sort of stuff. You know, what's allowed in the mail, what's not allowed. So lithium batteries, they say that those are not allowed. I guess there's special ways you package those up because if you puncture them, uh, they can't explode. Uh, sticks of dynamite, that's a no-no. Fire extinguishers, um, flammable liquids, kind of common sense stuff. Uh, radioactive material, so smoke detectors, medical isotopes, and measuring instruments. Hmm, didn't know that. Uh, but if you go down here to miscellaneous, it says dry ice, asbestos, strong magnet, and lithium batteries, self-inflating devices, meaning life preservers and airbags. So, that's that. Gas-filled shock absorbers. Huh, weird. So, it's not allowed to be mailed. Now, of course, you know, it happens all the time. You can see lots of uh, airbags being sold on eBay all the time. So people are shipping them through the mail. Um, now, it's up to you, right? Like, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but my conscience would not allow me because, you know, if I ever found out that my package exploded and someone got hurt, 
that would feel pretty bad. So I'm just not going to bother with those airbags, uh, reselling the airbags on them. And really, you're not supposed to put used airbags inside a vehicle anyways. So that's my take on that. Um, so I'll just uh, probably end up throwing them out. So just keep that in mind if you're going to resell some car parts.